will tell you first of all that the document satisfies the query, that some words from the query are present in the document, and second of all gives you a sense of what makes this document this document as against every other document. So interestingly, synopsis computation of documents will have to take idea to do it. Like for example, you know the word the or the word you know the word computer in a computer science document repository is useless as part of synopsis because every document has that. Okay, so it's a pretty big idea, this idea of thing, basically because you're trying to capture it's really the tip of the iceberg of trying to figure out what features should be represent a document like. And we punted that question by saying we'll represent the document by all its words. But not all its words are equally good at predicting it. In fact, there's also a bigger question as to whether all its words are enough of a description of the document. <coughs> In fact, if I told you that Netscape, the page, didn't have the word browser in it, which is like the most important characteristic of that page, and it's not there in it. So even if you give all words, you may still be dead. Okay, but all words clearly are not created equal. Some of them are more indicative of what makes this document this document, and some are less indicative. And IDF tries to capture that. And a related idea is TF. Within the same document, within the same document, if you consider multiple words in the document which have the same idea, then the word that has more instances of that word in the document is probably more representative of that document. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Suppose it turns out that uh, you know I have like two horns on my head which will be high IDF, right? Because none of you have horns, right? Um, now, somebody else has only one horn, right? Both the, the, the having the feature horn is equally high IDF. Nobody else seems to have it. We two are the contenders for this prize you're about to give. Who would get it? Me, because I have two of them. Whatever you're liking, I have two of them. But I also have 10 fingers, but you don't care about it, because everybody has 10 fingers. Do you see what I'm saying? So first you capture IDF, which is what features are important, and then you capture which document has more of those features. That's TF, term frequency. And the normalized term frequency is just nothing but number of instances of TF or W, word W, is number of instances of word W in the document divided by the maximum instances of any word in the document. Okay? So I'm just normalizing it with respect to, so suppose this word is present 25 times, but if everybody everybody else is present 80, 100, you know, the, the maximum instance, max, the word that is present most is present 1,800 times, then 25 is a dollar today. If on the other hand, this is present 25 times, and the maximum, the word that is maximally present is only present five times. I'm sorry, it cannot be five times, you know. If maximally present is present 25 times, because nothing can be done than 25, because this word is part of the document, then it will be one. Right? So TF is now going to be between 1 and 0. 1 is, in fact, the word you're looking at is the most frequent word in the document. And closer to 0 if it is one of the least frequent words in the document. I need both. Remember, two horns and the fact that horns are important in this class because nobody else seems to have. Okay? So I want both. What do I do? I take TF of W times IDF of W. And say that is the normalized weight of the word. Do you see this? That's where the, 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 the most uh, often used acronym in, um, in IR comes in, which is TF IDF rank. It's just common sense. You want to rank, you know, weight words both by the, you know, in 
reverse document frequency, that tells you how indicative that word is about this document, and the term frequency, which is how indicative and how frequent this word is with respect to other words in the document. Between TF and IDF, which is a local feature with respect to your document, and which is a global feature with respect to your document? TF is local. TF is local, IDF is global. Please remember this. I mean, I'm not going to ask questions on this, but you know, it's an important issue. IDF basically can only be captured if you know other documents. You can leave me alone and change the IDF of a word, but you can't change the TF of a word without changing it, if me being a document. Okay, that's what the Alibaba girlfriend did. She left everybody else's, uh, left this house alone and just put cross on every other house. That just drove down the idea to zero. Then zero times anything is still zero. So you're fine. Right? Okay? So that's basically the term weights in the vector model. Um, you want to really, ideally, a term weighting should solve the feature selection problem. This is what I was trying to say. This, what is in red is what this entire argument about, you know, my arms and my um, t-shirt, etc. Ultimately, what we're trying to find is not an un uh, um, uh, is not an undifferentiated description of Rao, but a differentiated description of Rao that differentiates Rao from everybody else. Right? And so in that case, you really are looking for what are the features that are indicative of Rao. Now, if you're thinking that features of Rao are the words, I mean, features of a document are the words in the document, then you want to see which words are more indicative of that document and which are less indicative of the document. And that depends on both the inverse document frequency and the term frequency. And you compute both of them, multiply one by the other, you get TF, IDF, weight. Now you would write the document in the TF, IDF weight form. So it's now still a vector. It's just a vector with different weights. A vector with different weights is a different vector. <laughs> right? I mean, so if I have, you know, here is a vector, here is another vector. It's just a vector with different weights. It just has a different x value and a different y value, but it's a different vector. You change the weights, you change the vector. If you change all weights by the same constant, you don't change the vector because the unit vector would be still the same. If you change one more than the other, then you are changing the direction of the vector. Then it's a different vector altogether, and cosine theta would be different. You see that? Okay. So, uh, so TF IDF basically is a normalized TF factor is given by frequency uh, of the word in the document divided by the maximum of any word in that document, maximum frequency of any word in the document. IDF is nothing but the log of number of documents divided by the number of documents that have this word added. And you take log for two good reasons. <laughs> At least, you know, one is that log of one is zero, the other is IDF otherwise can be much larger than TF. Because the size of the document corpus would be like eight billion and counting, right? Whereas the size of the document itself probably is much smaller. Okay, so TF words, TF weights are always smaller. IDF weights can become eight billion or something. So they can completely kill the TF weight. So you take log of them to kind of get them into the same. And then of course I can make a nice interesting argument as to why this is sort of a reasonable thing to do from an information theoretic perspective. But I won't do it right now. Okay, if you understand this, that's good enough. That is okay, so log is used to make the values of TF and IDF comparison. It can also be interpreted as the amount of information associated with the term KI. And those of you who have heard of information theory might make sense of it. Okay. Um, the other question, of course, is what do we do for queries? Now, of course, I can just do the same thing for queries too. Okay, so notice that uh, by now I've actually changed the weights of the document. So now each weight of the word I would be, word I would be the TF of that word I times of the IDF of that word I in the document. So each document now has corresponds to a different row. Okay, so let me go forward and say, first of all, that if this is my original documents, remember? When I convert, when I do the TF IDF, I'll get these documents. Once again, you know, this is going to be homework. You go to check whether that's true. Okay? Um, so you believe first, and what's this? Regan said, trust but verify. So trust me, but verify afterwards. No homework. Okay? So notice that obviously this is different. These numbers are different. 
Not only are the numbers different, there is no clear cut evidence as to, like for example, the 24 became 2.53, which you would have thought 21 should become something close to 2. Point something, but it actually became 14.56. It's capturing the intuitions, you know, it's like a 10 finger, eh, no big deal. One hand, wow, that's like a huge deal. It's capturing that, right? So it's now a different factor altogether. So now if I were to compute the distances between these documents, DF, IDF distances, uh, vector similarity between these vectors in this TF after the TF, IDF change, those similarities would be different. And they hopefully will be better. They'll be more closer to our intuition. Okay, um, the other final thing is that, so if I'm giving a query, um, in this case, database and index, so once again, I can, right now, in this slide, I'm assuming, I leave the query as it is. So I'll just say 101000. So I'm not doing TF IDF to the query itself. Why? Because query really doesn't have enough, uh, enough words. Okay, it doesn't have enough words. And already the documents, have been have taken the idea into account. So why should queries take idea into account? But what about giving the statistics of words over time? That's doing that's a different story. So it, that's again you having a query log. Okay, we are now assuming the query just came and we could answer. This. But that would be reasonable. Yes, learning is always reasonable. Remember, we got into this because we wanted one size fits all solution. Understand the one size fits all solution, but learning of any kind is always reasonable. It's just costly, okay? Um, and so, uh, if I have this query, then I can compute the distance between this vector, cosine theta distance between this vector and each of those vectors. And that is represented as a tf idf distance, and this was the tf distance. I'm just giving it to you, to see that you can stare at it, stare at it and see that the one is any better than that. In this case, good thing is that you still are saying that the same, remember this was the same query, right? We saw before, D5 was seen as the most relevant document before, if you were to show the most similar document first. But now I'm saying D2 is actually more similar. You can see whether that makes sense to you. You know, you should have really woken up if in fact I said D10 is the more similar document. <laughs> because that's a statistics document, this is a database query. That's not the question. It's just within the cluster, I said some other document is better. Okay, that's your DF idea. This is what you would implement for your for your first project. Um, the indexing part we'll talk next class. The only other thing I'm going to say here is while I left the query unchanged, which is a very reasonable thing to do, some people also do some things to the query. For example, here is you know a popular method in IR, I think it's called the OCAPI method, where basically they just without any good reason say this is what we do for the queries, okay? So the way the queries uh, weights are computed, remember that normal weights are computed TF times IDF, okay? For the query weight, this is the IDF part, but for the TF part, they are realizing that some words may not even exist in the query. So you add a 0.5 to any word that doesn't exist. So you start it off with a 0.5. Plus 0.5 times the TF. <laughs> you saying? So you actually compute the TF of that uh, that word with respect to the query, but then rather than just go with it, you multiply that by 0.5 and add a 0.5 to begin with. And then you multiply that by the IDF. I cannot really justify it too much as to why this makes sense. It sort of actually works well in what? In the track competitions. Remember track that I told you? You know, IR folks have these competitions. In track competitions, this seems to have worked fine compared to this, slightly better compared to this. Okay? Um, and then, of course, you can also say let the user give weights to the keywords to reflect their real preferences. That's not a bad idea. Right? <laughs> um, um, do that. But then, you know, depending on users doesn't necessarily, you know, other. This is, if the user does give real preference. So here is the issue. Um, suppose you were to say computer science to Google, and say computer, computer science to Google. And if it gives different answers, you know what Google is doing. So IR as a natural science, you get to do experiments on Google. You know, poke it this way, that way, and see how plots work and how Google works. Okay? 
um, you will actually see that computer, computer science will give you different results than computer science. So one way you can increase, if you work to be interested in that, the way you can increase the relative importance of a keyword is write more copies of that and less copies of other keywords. But this is because you understood so much, you're so smart, you're attractive students, you're undergrad student, you know, bozos, including us, most of the time don't know what we're looking for and we just feel like writing the computer science and assume the is just as important as computer, as important as science. Okay, so we'll stop here. Next class, we'll do the indexing and retrieval. That would, once you understand that, you have everything for the project. Thank you.